Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's look at a slightly more complicated structure for which we're going to find which members are under compression and which members are under tension. It is basically a simple bridge structure. It's supported on both ends. There's some loads here. There's a 2 kN load here, a 2 kN load there, and a 4 kN load in the middle. That's a total of 8 kN, which means we need to have an 8 kN set of forces pushing back. Since there's perfect symmetry, you can assume 4 kN on each side of the bridge. Now, how do we determine which members are under tension and compression? Some things we can think about is, first of all, let's look at the turning radii of the various members if they're only attached on one side and they were allowed to swivel back and forth. Also, what would happen if their supporting members were not attached? Well, let's take a look and see how we can utilize that information. Let's say that this member here was not attached here and that this member could swivel back and forth. Notice the turning radius of this member, since it's being pushed in this direction, would look something like this which means that it could not follow, the end of this member could not follow the line of action of the force, it would therefore be compressed in order to do so. We can then assume that this member is under compression. Now we know that if a member is under compression, that it pushes back against the joints on either end. There would be a force in this direction and a force in this direction towards the joint because this member was under compression. If we now draw the horizontal and vertical forces of the compression force here, so this would be the force in the vertical direction and the force in the horizontal direction, you can see then that this member causes a force to be pushed into the other member right here. This member would feel the squeeze, the force being pushed in this direction because of this component right here, which means this member here must also be under compression. And since the, the vertical force is in the upward direction, the positive direction. If this member wasn't attached here, this member would simply be pulled upwards. So this member is being is actually pulling, holding on to this point right here, pulling back down to compensate for this force. So we see a force in this direction, which means there must be force in this direction. This member must be under tension. Finally, notice that if this member was not attached here, and this was allowed to swivel in this direction because it's under compression. This force, this member pushes back in this direction. And what's holding this member from being pulled away in this direction is that it's attached here and it forms a force of tension here. This keeps this member from being pushed in this direction. Symmetry tells us that therefore this must be under compression, this must be under compression, this must be under tension, and this must be under tension. We only have a few more members to go. Now let's take a look and see what happens over here. Since there's a force in this direction, the force of the load, there must be a tension on this beam preventing this from going downward. So this must be hanging on to this joint right there. The force of tension means that it's pushing and, or let's say here that it's pulling in this direction and it's pulling in this direction. And notice, since this load is carried through this beam right here to this joint, this joint is being pulled downward. It has to be held back from coming down. That means these two beams must be under compression, holding this beam from going downward. So this beam is under compression, and this beam is under compression, pushing in this direction, pushing in this direction, and pushing in this direction, and pushing in this direction. Finally, we need to look at these two right here. Well. Since this beam is pushing on this joint in this direction, there must be a force in the opposite direction pulling it this way. That means this beam must be under tension. That means this beam must be under tension as well. And that's how we slowly work our way through the entire structure, and we've determined which beam's under tension and which beam's under compression. And that's how it's done.